Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing to create a graph in Unity. We're going to display our graph as a bar chart instead of a line graph. Let's get started. So here I have my graph from the previous video. We now have support for dynamic horizontal scaling and vertical scaling as well. Now depending on what values we're trying to graph, it might make more sense to use a bar chart rather than a line graph. So first of all, let's clean up our code. In here we're using two different names. In here we're creating a circle, but then we're using a dot connection game object. So that is not clean code. To keep things consistent, let's make all references called dot. And here's a Visual Studio tip. If you press Control R R, you can rename an object in our code. It will automatically rename all instances of that object. So in here, circle game object will be the dot game object and the create circle will become create dot. The last circle game object becomes the last dot game object. And up here, the circle sprite becomes the dot sprite. And finally down here, the dot has the name dot. Okay, our code is now cleaner. All our references are consistent and called dots. So let's make our bar chart. For now, first of all, we're going to go up here and simply comment out the line graph code. But later we're going to make both types usable. So let's just comment this out and comment this one. Okay. So in here, when we're creating the dots, let's spawn a bar instead. So let's go down here and make a private game object and call it create bar. So in order to display our bar, we need two things. First, we need the graph position of our value, which is going to be the same that we used for spawning the dots. And then we're going to receive the width of each of our values on our graph. So in here, I'm going to receive a vector two for my graph position and a float for my bar width. Now for our code, let's copy the dot code. Instead of dot, we're going to call it a bar. It's also going to have an image, but it will not have a sprite. If you don't set a sprite on an image component, it will just display a solid color, which is exactly what we want right now. We still want to anchor it to the lower left side, so this is correct. And our anchored position will be the graph position. And now up here, when we were previously spawning the dots, let's spawn a bar. So we're going to spawn with new vector 2 for my x position and my y position. And for the bar width, we're going to give it the x size. We're going to store the reference to our bar game object and add it to the game object list so it can be deleted. Okay, and let's test and see if we're spawning a square where the dots used to be. Yep, there you go. We now have squares where we used to have dots. So let's make these squares into actual bars. Back into our create bar function. For our anchored position, the X is going to be the same as we're receiving in here on the graph position, but the Y will be zero since we want the bars to originate at the bottom of the graph. So my anchored position will be a new vector two on the graph position dot X and then zero F. And for our size delta, we're going to have the X as our bar width and the Y as our graph position dot Y. So let's test it out. Okay, as you can see, the size of each bar does appear to be correct, but obviously the position is not. It seems the bar is being scaled from the center, which is located at zero. There are two ways we can solve this. First of all, we can move the anchored position to the middle point between the bottom and the chart position. Or we can simply set the bar pivot to the bottom middle and the bar will scale upwards from there. So let's do the latter. So in here, let's go into our right transform and modify the pivot, which is a vector two. The vector two is a normalized value. So for my X, since I want the middle, I'm going to give it 0.5F. And for my Y, since I want the bottom, let's set to zero. So this way the pivot should be on the center and the bottom. So let's test it out. And yep, there you have it. We took our line graph and we converted it into a bar chart. You can see the first value has a height of five, which was the value in our graph, and the second one of about 98, and there it is. If you want the bars to have a different width, let's say in here, instead of sending our entire X size, let's just send 90% of our X size. And this way we can spawn bars with a bit of a gap between them. So there you have it. We have transformed our line graph into a bar graph. In the next video, we're going to add the ability to switch between bar chart and line graph. 
As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Okay, see you next time.